Welcome to the Feed Your Family Tonight podcast. Do you dread hearing the question, what's for dinner? Whether you spend your days keeping up with toddlers, running kids to after school activities, or juggling a career and family, getting dinner on the table can be a struggle for us all. I'm Marie Feebach, a business owner, wife, and mom of four. I'm on a mission to build stronger families one dinner at a time, and I'm here with tips, tricks, and inspiration you need to feed your family tonight. Hello, friends. Welcome to the Feed Your Family Tonight podcast, episode 155. I'm your host, Marie Feebach. I am so happy to be here with you today. Today's episode is a replay episode way back to episode 17, where I talked all about knives. This episode kind of goes deep into what I think about knives, the knives that I personally prefer, and why those may not be the best knives for you. A couple of updates on this episode. I talk about how I am not an affiliate, and while I am not an affiliate for Victorinox, I am an Amazon affiliate. And the links in the show notes for today are affiliate links. I make like 17 cents or something, which helps kind of keep this podcast running. If you click on those links to buy the knives or the knife sharpener, know that it's an affiliate link. I really want to be transparent about that. But this episode is full of great knowledge about how to use knives, how to maintain knives, why you need good knives and the different kinds of knives. I'm telling you, there is just nothing like a good, sharp kitchen knife. I recently had to replace my beloved electric knife sharpener, and I have found out that I have some knives that are 15 degrees and some knives that are 20 degrees because Henkel's has changed how they are sharpening their knives. They used to sharpen their knives to 20 degrees, and some of their newer knives are sharpened to 15 degrees. My knives after 20 years of sharpening needed to go back under warranty to the factory. And this is something that I will tell you is that one of my knives, they reconditioned so they were able to fix it. Another knife, they just sent me a brand new knife. But because it is the new version, it is sharpened at a different angle. So my new knife sharpener that I got, which I'll link in the show notes too, has places for 15 degrees and places for 20 degrees. And so I can sharpen any kind of knife now, which is really kind of fun. Now that is a nice heavy duty electric sharpener. But if you do not even want to do that, and you don't even want to get a manual sharpener, my biggest update is that Williams Sonoma stores and Sir Latob stores will sharpen your knives for you. The first one is usually free. And if you're taking in more than one, it's like $5 a knife. So if you are someone who really doesn't want to buy a knife sharpener, doesn't want to sharpen your own knives, take them to your local Williams Sonoma or Sir La Taube, and they will sharpen them for you. So sit back, relax, enjoy this episode about knives, and I'll catch you on the other side. I might be a bit of a knife snob, although really, I think I'm more of a sharpening snob. And we'll get into that a little bit later today. So listen to what I do with my knife sharpener, you might get a kick out of it. My whole thing with kitchen knives is that you only need a few, and you want them to be the highest quality you can afford. But Telling people which exact knife to pick is something that you just can't do. I remember when I was engaged and was at Williams Sonoma with my fiance at the time, getting ready to do our registration, our wedding registry. And I knew that I wanted good knives. So I went to the clerk at Williams Sonoma and I said, okay, what's the best knife? And she gave me very, very good advice. She said, it's different for every person, depending upon your hand size and how you like things to feel while you're cutting, different brands of knives work for different people. And her advice was really, really good. So she said, handle every knife in this display, 
see what feels good, chop with it on our chopping board, see what feels good to you. And of course, all of their knives were very high end. They were very high quality, well built knives. And I wasn't going to go wrong with any of them that I tried. I ended up settling on Henkel's Professional S, which is one of their types of knives. Now, what you want to remember is these knife manufacturers, there's all sorts of them. And some of them have high end knives and low end knives. You can go to a store and buy a box of Henkel's knives. And I promise you, they are not the same knives as the ones that I have in my kitchen. And so I chose the route of picking a few good knives and I didn't get them all at the beginning. And so I would save up or I would ask for them for my one big Christmas present because some of these knives were expensive, like 80, 90, a hundred dollars each. But I chose to just buy them one at a time and wait until I could get good quality ones. And eventually I ended up with a butcher block of knives that doesn't necessarily look pretty, but it definitely serves my cooking needs. And I'm a pretty avid home cook. So I feel like if I, these are the knives that I need, there's very few other knives that most people would need in their kitchen. So I'm going to kind of walk you through the different knives that I have in my chopping block. And then I'll kind of talk with you a little bit about knife care and how to maintain your knives, which is almost more important than picking out a good knife. So in my block, I have an eight inch chef's knife, a six inch chef's knife, a paring knife, and those are all the Henkel's Professional S brand. Then I have a utility slash boning knife that is Chicago cutlery. I have a Henkel's Professional S serrated bread knife. And I have a serrated utility knife. And then I have a really good pair of Chicago cutlery scissors, cooking scissors. And I do have a honing steel, which I almost never use. How many of you in your house have one of those honing steels, which is like a big long rod that comes with knife sets a lot of times? And how many of you use it? How many of you even know how it's supposed to be used? I am not a chef. I am not professionally trained with knives, but I did take a knife handling class many years ago. When my husband and I were first married, there was a local restaurant called Tanya's Soup Kitchen, and it was run by this lovely lady. Her name was Tanya Tandock, and she has since passed away, but she was the sweetest lady, and she had this soup restaurant in downtown Wichita, And on Sunday afternoons, once or twice a month, she would offer these classes. And I begged my husband, they were kind of expensive, but I said, I really, really want to take her knife handling class. And so as a present to me, he got me in her knife handling class and she taught us how to hold a knife, how to use a knife. And then she taught us how to sharpen a knife manually on a sharpening stone. And that was a really, really good experience for me to know that I really don't want to sharpen knives on a sharpening stone. And I will be happy to buy an electric sharpener as soon as our budget allows it. Thank you very much. But it was so neat to be taught how to handle the knife well, how to make different kinds of cuts. And there were a couple of key things that she taught me that I've taken with me ever since. One thing is she taught me how to hold the knife with my fingers, actually my thumb and my index finger actually pinching the blade and then my knuckles slipped underneath the handle rather than having my hand behind the bolster, which is the widest part of the knife right before the handle, having my fingers on top of the blade. And it's amazing if you have never done that, how much more control you have over your cuts and over how the knife works if you are holding it that way. So I'm, most of you probably already know that trick, but I hadn't learned that trick 20 years ago when I took that knife handling class. And so that was something that was really, really key 
to learning. The other thing that was really important that she taught us is if a knife drops, let it fall. You might cut your foot, you might cut your leg, but please do not reach and grab it with your hand because you will cut your hand and these knives should be crazy, crazy sharp and you don't want to be trying to grab a falling knife. So that was a really fun piece of advice that I learned from Tanya Tandock. She also taught me to never put a knife in a sink full of soapy water unless you have your hand on the handle at all times. You don't want to be reaching underneath to try and grab a sharpened knife underneath a sink of soapy water where you can't see where you're grabbing. So those were some really important safety things that I learned from Tanya at this knife handling class. She also taught me a skill that I have used so many times in my life, which is how to cut the core off of a pineapple and how to cut a pineapple by slicing off the bottom, slicing off the top, and then going around the outside, getting off all of the exterior parts so you can get to the part of the pineapple that you want to eat. So that was a fun thing that I learned from Tanya Tandock. Back to kind of my block of knives. These knives serve me very well. The ones that I use the most are my eight inch chef's knife and my kitchen scissors. My kitchen scissors are indispensable in my kitchen. I cannot tell you how many times I use them to cut a piece of parchment paper so that it fits a cake pan or something like that, or I'm using it to cut up food into pieces, especially when my kids were little. When kids are little, you're always cutting their food into pieces and just keeping a pair of kitchen scissors at the table helps just chop their food into pieces so much faster than having to take a knife and fork and cut them into pieces. I use it when I'm putting my husband's leftovers into a container for lunch, especially if we're having something like spaghetti where there's really long noodles and he doesn't want to be having long noodles at his desk or at the communal lunch table at work. So I'll actually take the scissors and just cut the noodles into smaller pieces, bite-sized pieces for him to eat for his lunches because he doesn't want to really have a knife and fork and everything all in his lunch container. So my kitchen scissors are a indispensable tool in my kitchen. And those were a wedding gift too, which was kind of fun. They were given to me by a lady who was in the aerobics class that I was teaching at the time. They gave me a surprise wedding shower. And she said, this is the one thing my husband and I use. And I keep a stack of these and I give them to every bride because it was the best wedding gift I've ever given. How thoughtful is that, that she um, gifted me with the best wedding gift she has ever received. And I tell you, it was one of my favorite wedding gifts and I totally use it 20 years later in my kitchen. So my kitchen scissors. Now, if you have never really put much thought into your knives, you just have some, you're, you're not alone. So many people just have random knives or they go and they buy a box set. But what's more important to think about is, do you sharpen your knives? I learned from Tanya that a knife should be sharpened several times a week if you're a home cook. If you're a professional cook, you're sharpening your knives several times a day. And that long rod that people think are knife sharpeners really is what is called a honing steel. The knife blade actually curls under and starts to bend like the little pieces of metal at the bottom of the knife. And you can't really see it with the naked eye, but if you're looking with a microscope or a magnifying glass, you can actually see how the edge of the knife actually starts to kind of curl under. And the honing steel can take that and make the blade straight again. It can't make it sharper, but it can straighten out those pieces of metal that have started to curl under. To sharpen it, you actually have to have something that cuts away just the tiniest bit of the metal and sharpens it. There are lots of different kinds of sharpeners on the market right now. There are inexpensive ones that are $20 or less that you can hold in your hand and it's just a manual sharpener and you hold it in one hand and you run the blade through it in the other hand. 
And those can be really effective. My sister had gotten a block set of knives and they were starting to not work as well. And so slowly, piece by piece, we're replacing her knives and getting her really high, high quality knives. But when my mother and I were discussing this gift for her, I said, I will not buy her good knives unless we buy her a sharpener. So that year in her Christmas stocking, she got a knife sharpener. Because if you're going to have good knives, you need to sharpen them. Now I have an electric sharpener and it's actually a three-step sharpener. The first step fixes really, really, really bad knives. And if you keep your knives up, you would never have to use that first step because it really takes off a lot of the metal. And if you use it too much, it's bad for your knives. But the second step is the one that I run my knife through. And then the third step is actually a honing piece. So I don't use that honing steel. I actually use the third step on my knife sharpener. I have been known to carry my knife sharpener with me to all sorts of odd places and sharpen people's knives. I think I've told you before that I take it over to my mom's house every now and then and sharpen all of her knives. I've taken it to my sister's house and sharpened her knives. I've taken it up to the church kitchen and sharpened a few of the knives there because when I was working on a charity event and we were cooking and the knives were just horrible and I said, this is silly. And so I actually went home, got my knife sharpener, went to the church kitchen and sharpened all the knives in the church kitchen, which is crazy. What? you want to know is that you can hurt yourself more with a knife that is dull than a knife that is sharp because you're having to use more force on a knife that is dull. A knife that is sharp should just cut straight through the food without any trouble. It should just glide and slide right through. My thing is if my knife can just cut a tomato or a grape without any problems, then I know that it's sharp enough there are ways to actually test your knife with a piece of paper. If you are sharpening your knives and you get just like a piece of plain computer paper, like copy paper, and it cuts through without any trouble, then you know your knife is sharp. But if you try that with a dull knife, it, you're going to get little jags and it's going to tear and it's going to be hard to get just a straight sweep through with your knife. So if you're sharpening knives, you can use the paper test to do that. When you're looking at knives, there are two kinds of knives that are out there right now. There are the standard like European or American knives, and they have a 20 degree angle at their point. Or there are the Asian knives, and they're much thinner and have a 15 degree angle at their point. I don't have much experience with the Asian knives, so I can't really speak to them. I love my European knives. It's what I'm used to. They feel good in my hand and they um, serve me well in my kitchen. So I never have purchased an Asian knife. The other thing is if you have a combination of Asian knives and European knives, you want to be very careful what kind of sharpener you're using. Because when you're sharpening, you're sharpening to a very specific angle. Again, European and American knives sharpen to 20 degrees and Asian knives sharpen to 15 degrees. So you want to make sure you have the right kind of sharpener for the knives that you have. I'm a big fan of Cook's Illustrated, and they do a lot of testing on kitchen equipment. And over the years, they have tested, you know, all sorts of different kinds of knives, utility knives, chef's knives, Asian knives. And over and over again, they have a brand that is their quote unquote best buy. And it's the brand Victrinox. I am not an affiliate. I don't have any Victrinox knives in my butcher block, but I trust Cooks Illustrated quite a bit because they do really extensive research. So if you're looking for inexpensive or I don't want to say inexpensive, but less expensive knives that perform really well, you may look into Victrinox brand knives. I, again, am a big fan of my Henkel's Professional S knife. They feel really good in my hands and I have kind of small hands. So 
again, if you have larger hands, you may want to look at the Wustoff knives. They have a slightly different handle or some of the other Henkel's types of knives. They have a Pro and a couple of other different high-end knives that have different types of handles might fit better in your hand. But if you're shopping for knives, you want to look for ones that are made of high carbon steel, not necessarily stainless steel, but high carbon steel. There are some out there that are made of stainless steel, but they're harder to keep sharp. And there are things called ceramic knives and they're made out of like the same thing that your flat iron, you know how your flat iron is actually made out of ceramic plates. These ceramic knives are razor, razor sharp, and they are made out of ceramic material. I haven't ever used one, so I don't really want to speak to them, but they exist and they um, are supposedly very, very sharp. For me, it's really not about the knife so much. It's about making sure that you're sharpening them. The other thing it, in about knives is you want to use the right knife for the right task. So many people will go and reach for a serrated knife to like chop vegetables. A serrated knife, they have the kind of like the little scallops at the bottom and it's not really good for chopping vegetables. Although if you don't have a sharp chef's knife, a serrated knife is a really good option for chopping delicate things like tomatoes or grapes because it will slice through the skin better. I still prefer a really sharp chef's knife, but if you don't have one, a serrated knife is a really good option. Serrated knives are perfect for cutting bread because you don't actually push down with the knife. You go back and forth like a sawing motion, and that's why it has the little scallops or the teeth that saw back and forth. And that way you're not putting pressure on the bread and cutting it. The other knife that I keep in my house is I actually have an electric knife and I love it for cutting roasts or meat. I have memories of my father on Thanksgiving and I, you hear the sound of the electric knife whirring in the background and you know that it's close to dinner time because I learned from my father how to carve a turkey with an electric knife. And I like to use it to slice roast beef because you can get really, really thin slices. And the electric knife is actually serrated, but with the electricity, it moves back and forth so fast that it helps you cut through the food and helps you get really thin slices. So I do use my electric knife on occasion, especially when I'm slicing meats or roasts. My paring knife, which is just a little small four-inch knife, I use that when I'm doing things like cutting strawberries because you have to kind of cut the hole out of the strawberry. Anything that requires precision work, I use that paring knife for. I'll use it a lot of times in the mornings just because it's small to cut my kids' apples or if I'm getting lunches ready when I'm cleaning up dishes, I'll use my paring knife to cut apples with. My six inch chef's knife is a knife that I just use usually when my eight inch one is dirty. Is that terrible? (laughs) I, I don't go to it very often. My daughter uses it a lot of times when she's cutting salads or lettuce or something like that because she feels like she can control it a little better. I like the larger blade of my eight inch knife, but she likes the smaller six inch knife. So that is one that I keep around. The other thing when you're talking about knives is you want to think about what kind of surface are you actually cutting on? If you have nice high-end knives and you're taking the time and the effort to sharpen them, you do not want to dull them by the cutting board that you're using. Wood cutting boards are great. And I do have a couple of wood cutting boards in my house. I don't use them for meats. I use them exclusively for vegetables or um, cheeses or breads and that type of thing. But wood cutting boards are great, but I really like just plastic cutting boards. And I can tell you my favorite cutting board are my cheap, cheap, cheap cutting boards from Ikea. I get them in a two or three pack and there's not an Ikea in my town, but anytime I buy an Ikea, I slip in and I buy a couple of cutting boards 
and they're perfect. They're big enough to hold a head of romaine lettuce, but they're small enough to fit inside my dishwasher. And I love, love, love them. I also have a very large cutting board that has a little indentation around it. And I use that anytime I'm cutting anything that's juicy. So think roast beef or roast chicken, where some of those juices are going to come out. The little lip around it collects those juices. So A, you can save them because they're good. And B, so they don't go rolling off on your countertop and dripping everywhere. I also use that large cutting board when I'm cutting things like watermelon or cantaloupe, because again, they're juicy and the juices exude as you cut them. And I don't want the juices running all over my kitchen counter. So when you're using good knives and you have nice knives that you're taking the time to sharpen, please use a good cutting board. Don't use a glass cutting board. Don't use a marble cutting board because those can dull your knives. You want to use something that's plastic or wood Or if you have a marble that's a really softer marble, you could use that, but I then they get dirty and stained and marble's just kind of problematic in my opinion in so many ways. So I kind of avoid the marble ones. I want to talk with you a little bit about how to care for your knives. Again, when I was first married, I lived in this teeny tiny apartment and I had these beautiful new knives and I put them in the dishwasher. And it didn't say on the instructions not to put them in the dishwasher. And one of them rusted. And so I went back to the store where I'd gotten it. And I said, this knife rusted. And the clerk said, did you put it in the dishwasher? And I said, it didn't say in the directions not to. And she said, I'll replace it. But you cannot put it in the dishwasher ever again. And so I didn't. You don't want to put your good knives in the dishwasher They will get rusty and it is not good for them. You want to make sure you sharpen them regularly. You want to store them properly. And that can mean in a butcher block. That can mean in a knife case. They actually have like drawer inserts that have slots that protect the blades that you can put the knives in. Or there's magnetic strips A lot of times you'll see those in professional kitchens where the knives just line up on a magnet. I have kids in my house and having knives just all along on a magnet kind of scared me. So I went the butcher block route. But the big thing is you don't want them just free flowing in your drawer to have other things bumping against them because that will wear on the knife and wear on the blade and also kind of scary just reaching and looking for something else. And there's a really sharp knife there and you could just cut your finger on them. So that's a little bit about how you want to care for your knives. Hot soapy water works great. Make sure you dry them immediately. Don't leave them sitting out to air dry because those little bits of water sitting on them before they evaporate is not good for the metal of the knives. So you want to wash them. You want to dry them promptly and put them away. That's a little bit about what I know about knives I hope that that replay episode gave you a lot of knowledge and I hope it inspired you to think about the knives as we are getting close to the Christmas season. Sometimes it's hard to think of gifts to get ourselves and maybe you want to get a knife sharpener or maybe you want to get a new knife. I'm going to link to my favorites in the show notes. Just like last week, I am still partnering with Thriving Home. If you are wanting to get your freezer full as the holidays are starting to approach, with easy meals for your family as you get into a busy season, look at thrivinghomestore.com. They have a shop full of these wonderful one-hour freezer prep sessions. Use the code MARIE20 to get 20% off. And there are all sorts of different bundles. Basically, you are making double batches of three recipes in one hour, so you have six freezer meals ready for busy nights. And let me tell you, as we head into November and December, there's going to be a lot of busy nights and having a meal in the freezer ready to go is going to serve you well. I've said before, it's not my wheelhouse, but Polly and Rachel know what they are doing with freezer meals that are easy, family friendly and taste delicious. So go check out their thrivinghomestore.com and use the code MARIE20 
or follow the link in the show notes. For now, friends, I can't wait to meet you in the Feed Your Family Tonight Facebook group. Meet me over there and we're going to talk about knives this week. For now, friends, take care.